Deb McBride and I'm an astrologer in New York City and today I'm going to talk to you about Uranus and Pluto and Mercury. My website is debmcbride.com if you're interested and you want to see it. My experience with Mercury, which is the communication planet, the bringer of messages, the bringer of communication, is that Mercury is to be used for positive experiences, positive communications with people, positive uh, dialogue. And right now, Mercury, you may have heard of Mercury retrograde, which means that Mercury would be traveling apparently backwards, but not entirely backwards, because mer planets don't turn backwards. From our perspective on the Earth, Mercury appears to be traveling backwards. Uh, Mercury was retrograde from January 5th to January 25th, and Mercury in its transit was connecting in the sign of Capricorn with planets such as Uranus and Pluto. Mercury, when it connects to the outer planets, takes on an entirely different tone. What we need to say, what we're thinking of, how we dialogue with people is a complete and utter uh, a different experience because Mercury is not in its usual state. It's not about light, fluffy communication then. It's not about light and fluffy thoughts. It's about analysis. It's about complicated dialogues, unusual connections with people. And what's happening with Mercury and Pluto is that Mercury moved into the sign of Capricorn back in December, came to the sign of Aquarius, turned around at early Aquarius and started to move backwards. And when it came three weeks into its retrograde, it turned direct came to 15 degrees of Capricorn, it turned around retrograde direct, what we call stationary direct, and it moved forwards. Now, it takes a little while for a planet to technically move forwards. It is not something where it just instantly moves forwards and everything's okay again. Now, two things. One, first of all, when Mercury's retrograde, communications can be a little bit confused misunderstand misunderstood misunderstandings happen all the time you're saying one thing people are saying something else um you're not understanding each other you know there's this thing that people get afraid when mercury's retrograde and that's not true at all you don't need to be afraid when mercury's retrograde you just need to be very cautious and careful about how you word things and how you approach your communications in your life. People say, ah, oh, my computer broke, my fax machine broke, etc., etc." Those are very common under Mercury retrograde. But more importantly, you have to watch what's happening in your communications with people and in your dialogues. Now, there are lots of astrologers that will tell you not to sign a contract under Mercury retrograde, and that's very true. If you can avoid signing a contract under Mercury retrograde, it's very important to do that. Otherwise, life goes on, you have to keep moving, and you just sign what you need to sign, renew a lease if you have to, renewals are good during Mercury retrograde, but sign a contract, do what you need to do, and just expect that when Mercury turns direct after the three-week period, that things will shake themselves out, meaning that maybe the contract you sign, there are some some stipulations in there that will give you an idea that things have changed. So, for example, you buy a condo, you sign your mortgage, you go to your closing on Mercury Retrograde, you find out that the roof rights that you thought you were going to have as part of buying this condo are under certain circumstances or maybe not at all. So things that are understood at the signing of the contract during Mercury Retrograde often change when Mercury goes direct. So that's something just to be aware of. You go on with your life, for sure. Now, when Mercury moved forward, so this is the other thing, when Mercury moved forward, it stopped on the planet Pluto. Pluto is in Capricorn. Pluto is an outer planet. It is not something where we take things lightly, like I said. Pluto is a deep, intense, profound communication and connection with people. Outer planets are not visible with the naked eye. When an inner planet such as Mercury connects with an outer planet, we're not necessarily going to look up in the sky and be able to tell that. However, Mercury to Pluto indicates that thoughts are a little obsessive, thoughts are very intense, they're profound, communications are profound, because this is the nature of Pluto. Outer planets are not something where we take the situation lightly. They operate on two levels. They can operate in a personal way, which is 
you know, it's connected to Mercury, your communications are more serious, there are more serious conversations coming, people are, are more devoted to the outcome than they might have been had it been a light conversation. What also happens is that Pluto and any outer planet are being, you are being affected by them through what Jung called the collective unconscious. And to explain that means that there are these collective cycles that we experience in life. Sometimes it's fads, sometimes it's waves of culture. Uh, sometimes we go through these periods and they're short periods, shorter periods, but there are generally stretches of time that the outer planets dominate by being in a particular sign. So Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn, which is about commerce, which is about business, which is about money making, which is about the banking industry. And so we've seen a lot of changes in the banking industry and, and commerce and all since Pluto has entered Capricorn in 2008. It'll be there for a while yet. We've got another good seven years or so of Pluto and Capricorn. But when Mercury stops and sits on Pluto, this means that Mercury is not going anywhere for a little while and the necessary dialogues and conversations that you have to have are fraught with either obsessiveness, with uh, hidden motives, with sometimes with manipulations. Sometimes they are completely, utterly clear, but they're very deep and intense conversations or connections you're making with people. Sometimes you make a person, you connect with a person for the first time under Mercury retrograde and it's not so certain. And then, it, it, for example, this last one, it's, it's not so certain. When it sits on Pluto like this, Mercury and Pluto connect in a whole other way. So Pluto is the planet of darkness into light. It's the planet of transformation. It is the planet of connecting with one's own spirit, one's darkness, and empowering oneself. Pluto feels simultaneously powerful and powerless. When you put Mercury with that, your thoughts vary. They vacillate from powerfulness to powerlessness. One minute you're on top of the world, the next minute you're not. You feel like you're helpless in your situation. This is all going through your head all at the same time that this aspect is happening. Mercury went direct last Monday, the 25th of January. It sat on Pluto and it's still sitting on Pluto. At 15 degrees Capricorn, it moved to 16 yesterday and so did Pluto. So this is a dramatic, intense time for thinking, for thought, for connection, for being serious about one's thoughts and committed to one's words. Very important. When Mercury is when you give your word. Anyone who is a Gemini or a Virgo is ruled by Mercury. It is very important that they give their word and they speak their word honestly. With Pluto, we have no choice but to do that. And so Mercury sits on Pluto and connects with Pluto and we feel things, we see things and we imagine things in a way that we have not in a very long time. Now, back in mid-December, Mercury passed over Pluto around the 17th, 18th of December and connected with Pluto then. And that was the beginning of the cycle because Mercury moves back away when it retrograded and now it's here. And sort of whatever lesson you were going through, whatever emotional or intellectual process you were going through at the time of mid-December like that, that is coming back for you to study and understand. And there were some ideas and perhaps inspirations and commitments made during that time that it's very important for you to connect with those and remember those and sort of reflect on what you were thinking at the time. So Uranus is, is also traveling in this picture. Pluto has not been traveling alone for the last four years or so. In about mid 2012, Uranus, the planet of dramatic changes, the planet of chaos, the planet of the unexpected, the inspired, and the genius has been traveling with Pluto in what we call a square aspect, which is a 90 degree aspect between the two planets. Geometrically, you remember what a square is and the angle of a square, which is 90 degrees. If you connect Uranus and Pluto, you are dealing with something profound and intense and life altering. So for the last three years, we've experienced profound, intense, life-altering changes in our world. Look about you, look at your culture, look at where you're from and what's happened politically, socially in your country. Things are, have been very dramatic. Certainly here in the United States, they have been. And 
this is a has been a very important historical time. Some very historical movements have been made, and I don't need to recount those. People know what they are. Um, the last time Uranus and Pluto got together was the 1960s. Now, most of us know the turmoil, the cultural changes that occurred during the 1960s, and Uranus and Pluto were the undercurrent, the collective unconscious, the deep-seated wave that happened during the 1960s. And when you look at the 1960s historically, and you look at the times and how they were manifesting and how the culture changed, I always tell my clients, look at the beginning of the 1960s. Look at how people were dressed. Look at their fashion. They were all very proper, a lot like the late 1950s. By the time the end of the 60s came, that was all gone. And you see this cultural sweep, this wave that happened and occurred during the 1960s. If you think about it from that perspective, from a person's perspective, imagine the people that you knew, that your grandparents, your parents, in the early 1960s, imagine what it was like for them. They could not even fathom something like Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock, which happened in 1969. That's two different worlds. And this is the nature of Uranus and Pluto. This is what happens when we put those two together. Major cultural waves happen. Major sonic quantum waves happen in all of our lives. So when Mercury gets connected to Pluto and Uranus, we experience something that could be life altering. In that week, words are said, exchanges made, vows made people talk to one another, make deals, and we connect with a, a source of inspiration and genius within ourselves. So not only does Mercury sit on Pluto right now, but it is squaring Uranus. Now Uranus and Pluto are starting to move apart. They will not make an exact relationship again from one another. However, they are closer now than they have been, say, in the last six months or so. They are very close together. And so this is what I consider one last hurrah of the Uranus and Pluto aspect. Look at this this week and the next couple weeks. Look at your life and see how it's changed in the last three and a half years or so. And think about what's happening now and how what is happening in your life now is a manifestation of what happened in these last three years, what projects you started, what inspirations you had, what life changes occurred. What's manifesting for you now? What are you thinking about? What has occurred, especially during this last Mercury retrograde, that inspires you and takes you perhaps on another journey? Because Uranus and Pluto are about going on another journey. They are not something to be toyed with lightly. They are life-altering energies that affect our lives and we can expect things to change. This is a good change. It's an evolution. It's an evolutionary journey. You can't erase it. You can't say that it's um, meant nothing to you. Something's happened. You've changed. We've all changed. And seeking that out and looking within is the way you discover and connect with what's changed. And therefore are informed, Mercury, Mercury's always information, you're informed about the rest of your journey and how that manifests and how that plays out. Experience what is happening right now in your life and understand it so that you can be informed about what's coming forward in these next few months. Very important. Do not make promises you cannot keep. Um, be true to your word. Be, be aware of your word. Awareness is most of this, is a big part of this. We are all in the grip of the universe. Uranus and Pluto are affecting each and every one of our charts. Some place in your chart, Uranus and Pluto have landed. And right now they're connecting with Mercury and you're, you're supposed to receive a message about this. You're supposed to receive a message about your life. Very important to do this. So my advice is these next few days and next few weeks as Mercury starts to slowly move forward and move towards freeing itself from Uranus and Pluto, see what happens, see what's come forward. Where have you been inspired? Where are you connected? How are you moving forward on this evolutionary journey? Because as my teacher used to say, Uranus and Pluto, the outer planets, they don't care what you have planned. They don't care that you're spending the holidays with your family. They don't care that you plan to take a vacation. Things sweep through your life with Uranus and Pluto. Events, occurrences, 
sometimes traumatic experiences sweep through your life with Uranus and Pluto and they are not entirely clear at the time they're happening but when the dust settles and as it will over the next few weeks we become more conscious of what the journey is and what our experience of that is and how it didn't matter that you were or were not going on that vacation or that you were connecting with your family during the holidays. Hi Paris, welcome. <laughs> Paris has gone through its own changes too, so Uranus and Pluto have affected Paris in these last few months as well. It's very dramatic energy, very dramatic. It's important to not underestimate I don't understand Russian, I'm sorry. Um, Uranus and Pluto are very much about transformation in your life. It is so important to embrace transformation now and think of transformation as something that is right for you, that is, that is part of your life right now. Don't, don't resist it, open to it. Transformation is is where we are right now. Thank you for joining. Um, it's important to realize what this is. And, you know, we're all a little tired of this energy as well. We've been going through this for the last few years. And it's so important to understand its place in our life. And if you don't have your astrological chart, I think that it's good to have a look at it online and do a little a little research about how these planets manifest in your life. Remember, we can't see them with the naked eye. So to my estimation, I always tell people that when you have planets you can see with the naked eye, like Venus, like the moon, you can look up at night and see the moon or you can see the stars. Venus, Mercury, Saturn, we can assimilate them a little more easily. When we deal with outer planets, we're not assimilating that energy so readily. They work on an unconscious level. We behave in ways we'd never experience. Hello, everyone. We work in ways that we have never experienced. We are gearing our life for some greater transformation, and it's really not... A conscious experience so it's important for you to embrace whatever is coming your way I really think that Uranus and Pluto will help everyone will change their life will dramatically improve things but you have to be ready and you have to be open to the changes you have to be willing to feel the visceral effects of what Pluto will bring and Pluto is about this intense transformation. You may be feeling something and acknowledging something intellectually that you haven't in a really long time. And it was waiting to happen. It's waiting to happen. So the smart thing to do is go with it, to embrace it. And embrace some of the darkness. Embrace some of the darkness because it's so important for you to experience life as life and light and dark so best wishes my website is deadmcbride.com and good luck on this Uranus Pluto journey in this next week with Mercury and I wish you much success bye, -bye.